Many fans of the hit sitcom Cheers might not realize the show's titular bar took its inspiration from a real-life Boston location named the Bull and Finch Pub. In fact, the real-life pub was actually used for the fictional bar's exterior shots on the show. After Cheers became successful, the owner of the Bull and Finch Pub capitalized on the attention by changing the pub's name to Cheers Beacon Hill. Join Facts First as we take a look inside the real bar from Cheers. Cheers is a classic sitcom that ran on NBC from September 30, 1982 to May 20, 1993. The show was one of the network's most successful shows during its 11 years on the air. The plot of the show centered on the denizens of its bar, a pub named Cheers. A real-life pub in Boston inspired the fictional location and was also used for the exterior shots. As Cheers became more and more popular, fans became more interested in finding out the true story behind the location that inspired it. The real-life pub that inspired it was named the Bull and Finch. However, the bar's name was later changed to Cheers Beacon Hill to better capitalize on the success of the show. The Bull and Finch pub was founded in Boston in 1969. The pub was a huge success soon after opening, with people from all over the country stopping in for a visit while in Boston. The Bull and Finch pub made an impression on the creators of Cheers, and they used the location as an inspiration when crafting their own fictional pub. Although the interiors of the Bull and Finch pub and the bar on Cheers may not be identical, the real-life exterior provides the perfect face for both. In reality, the interior of the Bull and Finch pub is a good deal bigger than the cozy bar featured on Cheers. But the owner opened up another location, after the success of Cheers, that more closely resembled the show's bar. In 2001, the owner of the original Bull and Finch pub, which was now named Cheers Beacon Hill, the second location opened up in August of 2001. It was dubbed Cheers Faneuil Hall, named after the area it was located in. The much smaller location served as a place for Cheers fans to get a more intimate experience that more accurately mimicked the show. Sadly, the location has since closed down due to COVID-19. The original location is still open. Many fans were devastated when Cheers Faneuil Hall announced it was closing. Sadly, many other restaurants and businesses around the world were doomed to a similar fate as a result of the virus. The interior of Cheers Faneuil Hall also served as a veritable museum for memorabilia from the show, and all this memorabilia was sold off after the closing. While Cheers Faneuil Hall once served as a public place where fans could get together and experience this memorabilia together, much of it is divided up in private collections now, likely to never be seen again. Thankfully, the profits went towards maintaining the original location, which is still operating. In 2009, the Cheers Beacon Hill location made news when it made the decision to lay off a longtime bartender named Eddie Doyle. Eddie had been bartending there for over three decades, having started back when it was called the Bull and Finch. He was also one of the co-founders of the charity Cheers for Children, which used the bar's fame as a catalyst to raise money for children in need. Tom Kershaw, the owner of Cheers Beacon Hill, said they had to let Eddie go due to restrictions put upon his budget by the recession. To commemorate Eddie after the loss of his longtime job, the city of Boston decided to name an intersection after him. Eddie Doyle Square was later unveiled to the public, with a ceremony headed by then-Boston Transportation Commissioner Thomas Tinlin. Hey, if you're enjoying this video so far, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to Facts First for more. The fictional bar that served as the location of Cheers was located in Boston, just like the real-life pub that served as its inspiration. Cheers followed a group of Bostonians who all meet up at the bar to drink. As the theme song of the show suggests, all of the customers in the bar knew each other's names, and the bar served as a second home for them. Because of this, they were like family. But that doesn't mean they all got along. The main character was Sam Malone, the pub's bartender. Sam was played by Ted Danson, who rose to immense fame due to his portrayal of this character. Sam was a notorious womanizer and former relief pitcher for the Boston Red Sox. For the first several seasons, Sam had a love interest in Diane Chambers, played by actress Shelley Long. Shelley also rose to great fame due to her time on the show, and even quit partway in to try to branch her success into a Hollywood career. After she left, Sam was given another love interest in the form of Kirstie Alley's Rebecca Howe. Rounding out the rest of the cast were the bar's many regular denizens. These included memorable characters like Norm Peterson and Cliff Clavin, Later on, Fraser Crane was introduced and became a beloved regular. The character of Norm, played by actor George Wendt, appeared in every single one of Cheers' 275 episodes. Actor John Ratzenberger played the character of Cliff, a know-it-all postal worker, always one-upping his fellow patrons. 
In a cross-promotional effort, the character of Cliff even made a guest appearance on the beloved game show Jeopardy, which is another NBC staple. Fraser Crane was introduced a few seasons in, played by then-unknown actor Kelsey Grammer. Like Ted Danson and Shelley Long, Kelly proved one of the biggest stars to come out of Cheers' immense success. Although the character of Frasier wasn't originally intended as a regular, the chemistry the character had with the other regulars at the bar struck a chord with the audience. Frasier was introduced to complicate the relationship between Sam and Diane. He was meant as a love interest for Diane. He was charming and smart, while Sam was brutish and more of an everyman. After the love triangle storyline came to an end, the producers realized they didn't want to let Kelsey go. Shelley Long eventually left the series, and Kelsey Grammer's character was written into the series as a regular. The character of Fraser Crane remained one of the show's most popular characters until its end in 1993, and was given an equally successful spin-off in the 90s. After Shelley Long left the show, Fraser Crane was given another love interest in the form of Lilith Sternan, played by B.B. Newworth. By Cheers' end, Fraser and Lilith were married, and Lilith had given birth to a child. The finale of Cheers aired on May 20, 1993. In addition to the finale, a special aired afterwards that showcased Jay Leno and the cast of Cheers celebrating at Cheers Beacon Hill. Jay Leno interviewed the cast and the show's theme song was played as the camera viewed the exterior of the real-life location. Fans were gathered outside, making for a touching send-off of the series after the airing of the finale. Many years later, Cheers Faneuil Hall opened up and stayed open for nearly two decades. Cheers Beacon Hill is open to any Cheers fans who wish to get the closest thing possible to a real-life Cheers experience. Although the interior of the pub itself doesn't match the set used on Cheers, a smaller area has been created that works as a modernized replica. It also remains the ultimate place to get Cheers merchandise, as well as experience remaining memorabilia. Now it's time to hear from you. Comment down below to share if you've ever been to Cheers Beacon Hill, or if you have any plans to visit the real-life location. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.